supremacy in NCAA 1AA football is on the line tonight in Huntington as top-ranked Marshall squares off against seventh-ranked Georgia Southern in a battle of Southern Conference juggernauts. Marshall's mean green defense has yet to surrender a touchdown this season, while Georgia Southern is showing flashes of the form that produced plenty of national championship banners in Statesboro in the 80s. It's Georgia Southern and Marshall next on the Thundering Herd Network. Sold-out crowd in Huntington, West Virginia has gathered tonight for the biggest NCAA 1AA football game of the young college football season as the Eagles of Georgia Southern meet the Marshall Thundering Herd. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Weekly, joined once again tonight by former NFL All-Pro wide receiver and Marshall University football coach Sonny Randall. Sonny, now that Marshall and Georgia Southern are league rivals in the Southern Conference, this big 1AA game has added significance. How do you see the matchup? Well, David, we got number one and number seven. You get those two together, you know you're going to have a great football game. We've got two outstanding defenses. They will stone one another here this evening. Whoever wins will find themselves in the driver's seat as far as the Southern Conference standings are concerned. Let's check our Hardy's keys to the game. Keys for Georgia Southern, they've got to have better execution on offense. They feel whichever team executes the best on offense will have a big advantage here. Kicking game, turnovers, awfully big in any game certainly will be huge here this evening. They do not want to be intimidated by this large crowd. For Marshall, they've got to have better execution on offense. They've had nine or ten people executing. Tonight, they've got to have 11. They want answers for the flex phone. They want them in a hurry. Kicking game, always big. Certainly will be here this evening. Some of the best players in 1AA football will be suited up on this field tonight. Let's examine our key performers. Well, certainly for Georgia Southern, uh, Joe Dupree, he's an outstanding youngster. Uh, if he reads those defenses correctly, I'll tell you one thing, they will move their offense. An exceptional quarterback, I'm sure that he's looking for a big night. On defense, Alex Mash. Tell you what, if there's a better 1AA football player in the country, I'd like to know who it is. For Marshall, Chris Parker, great speed, great quickness, just a sophomore. Last week, 160 yards, two touchdowns. An exceptional football player. On defense, Shannon King. Outstanding linebacker, find the football for Georgia Southern, you'll find Shannon King. Marshall admits they've been pointing towards this game since two-a-day practices back in August. Georgia Southern feels with an upset win tonight, they may vault themselves into position for a fifth national championship. It's Georgia Southern and Marshall from Huntington. Stick with us. With the first of his Pepsi sideline reports, Mark. All right, thank you very much, David Weekly. I like what Rob Stockton, Georgia Southern Strong Safety, had to say about tonight's game. He said this is the Florida State-Miami game of 1AA football. We'll see what happens. Let's go now to, uh, and again, this game tonight, great crowd on hand here, and we've got it for you here. Stay tuned from Huntington. It's Marshall and Georgia Southern coming up. The Southern, the Eagles, and the Marshall Thundering Herd, two members of the Southern Conference, both undefeated. We've got a sold-out stadium and weather conditions absolutely perfect tonight. Temperatures in the low 60s, no rain to speak of tonight. Marshall has won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. David Merrick from Worthington, Ohio, set to kick it off. Chris Wright set to receive it for the Eagles. David, it does not get any better than this. Super game, sold-out crowd. Standing room only in Huntington tonight, and we are underway. High, short kick, right, takes it, and is covered immediately at the Georgia Southern 17-yard line, and that work is where the Eagles' offensive unit of head coach Tim Stowers will take control of the football. Just two games in this series. The last game, Georgia Southern won 17-14 in the final night game at Old Fairfield Stadium. Georgia Southern marched the length of the field inside of two minutes to score the go-ahead touchdown, and they defeated the herd. The other meeting in this series took place back in 1989. More on that later. Joe Dupree under center for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. And from the flex bone, they go right to the fullback, James Williams, for minimal yardage. And when you see the flex bone, you'll see the dive, and you'll see it a bunch to the fullback. Offensive line for Georgia Southern. Miguel Ayub making his 40th consecutive start tonight. Backs and receivers. Fraley and Williams in the backfield. Wright also there. Willis and Dexter Dawson, the wide receivers tonight. 
You stop the dive, you can stop the flex bone. You don't stop the dive, it's a long, long night. There you can see Joe Dupree. He doesn't put it up very often. But he will here. Dupree rolling, still rolling. Tucks it under. Across the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Close to a first down. Let's take a look at that thundering herd defense, a defense that has not surrendered a touchdown this season. Rodney Garrett, the outstanding left end, and King, the linebacking core. William King, the senior from Charleston, West Virginia. Melvin Cunningham and Tuan Reynolds on the corners. Shannon Morrison and Roger Johnson, the safeties. Roger Johnson, outstanding on run support. He needs to have a big game for the thundering herd tonight. It's a first down for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Just underway from Huntington. The winner of tonight's game really has a leg up on the Southern Conference Championship. Motion. Got some movement in the line. And will most likely go against the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Just a little bit anxious here early. You can understand why they would be. The call from our referee, Ron Buckner, tonight. And those penalties really hurt Sonny, especially a ground-oriented offense like Georgia Southern has. You surely don't want to be looking at first and 15 too often. Three wide receivers for Georgia Southern, and Dupree wants to put it up. The pass is incomplete at the 37-yard line. Shannon Morrison had the coverage on Dexter Dawson. Pass just a little too tall to the far side. Dupree sprints to his right. Actually a better runner than thrower. When he pulls it down or tucks the ball, I'll tell you what, better hold on to your hat. Georgia Southern did not complete a pass last week in their 16-6 win over the Citadel, but obviously they're trying to show the thundering herd tonight. They can move the football through the air. Second down and 15. Up the middle again. It's the Williams. Across the 45 and to the 47-yard line. James I, Williams. I said at the outset, you've got to stop the dive. Anytime you look at a flex bone or a wish bone or whatever, watch the dive here to the fullback. Quick hitter. There's a seam. It'll be a long, long evening if they don't shut down the dive. It's a 23-yard game for James Williams. First and 10 for Georgia Southern at the 47-yard line. Georgia Southern loves that ground game. Their fullbacks averaging over six yards a carry. They go to the fullback again, and this time Marshall stuffs it. And the key was Twan Reynolds coming up from his cornerback position to add run support. Well, you've got to get the uh, backs, uh, you safeties and corners uh, to fill. They have the assignment responsibility. Quarterback, dive. Williams, a little bit quicker of the two between he and Stevens. Good speed, good quickness. You give him a crack, he's going to go a ways. Reynolds and William King make the stop. Second down and nine, a gain of just one yard. Dupree looking to put it up again. Fires incomplete. Shannon Morrison had the coverage, and once again, he was looking for Dexter Dawson. That pair hooked up against Savannah State for a 74-yard touchdown in Georgia Southern's opener this season. Dupree tried to sprint to the far side through a one-hopper. They don't like to put the ball in the air unless they absolutely have to. The Georgia Southern offense averaging just 286 yards per game. That doesn't sound like a lot, but 221 of those yards come via the ground game. Third down and nine. They try to slip it to Williams again into the center of the line, and Marshall's defense is there to stuff it. Eric Clausen from Huntington, West Virginia, Huntington East High School makes the stop. And Georgia Southern will be forced to punt the football. Bill Thatcher in to kick it away. 
We're going to see the two putters a lot here this evening, unless I missed my call. Tim Martin from Chattanooga, Tennessee, set to receive the punt back at the 10 yard line. Nice puck. Beautiful. Got all of it. Martin calls for the fair catch at the 8 yard line. Marshall will have the football when we return to Huntington. No score. First, bring her starting their first drive of the night from their own nine yard line. Draw. Glenn Pedro comes up the football. Recovered by Marshall. Nearly a catastrophe the, for the Thundering Herd, and J.D. Cyrus, the center, came up with it. Cyrus, very alert, very alert, just pounced on the ball. When you put a helmet on a ball, normally you can dislodge it. That's exactly what happened. Pedro appeared to have some daylight early on, but it's just a one-yard gain, second down and eight, offensive line. Aaron Ferguson, the true freshman, in at right guard tonight for the injured Brian Roberts. Second down and nine. Boot. Pedro's got, Donnan's got lots of room to run, guns the football. I believe the pass was intended for the tight end Danny White. Tim Martin was also in the area. Backs and receivers for the Thundering Herd. Chris Parker coming off an outstanding effort. He's the reigning Southern Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Wide receivers Ricky Carter and Will Brown. Danny White, your tight end. For Georgia Southern up front, they are quick and doubly dangerous, led by Alex Mash, who's the Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Week. He had three and a half sacks last week. And Paul Carroll leads up the linebacking core for the Eagles. He's their top tackler. Third down and eight. Protection Great. is good for Don and Tim Martin going long for Ricky Carter. A flag is down. An interference penalty is pending against the Eagles of Georgia Southern. No question, Rob Stockton was in the face of Ricky Martin. We were told this week, Sonny, that Marshall was going to show us a lot of new wrinkles. We just saw one. You throw that swing pass out there, all of a sudden, boy, here comes the secondary, and you got somebody behind him. Boy, if Martin could have got a little more in the pass, that would have been a touchdown. Just under threw it a bit to Carter. Well, he's not used to throw that long ball. How about Marshall throwing caution to the wind there from their own goal line on third and eight? Here's the call. For one of these teams to move the football here this evening, or for both of them to move it, they're going to have to throw caution to the wind. Actually, look at Tim Styles, the excellent head football coach of Georgia Southern. First down and 10 from the 26 yard line. Single back set for the herd this time. Casey Hill comes in motion, and there's the handoff to Chris Parker, and he shoots through a hole across the 35 and up to the 36-yard line. He's near a thundering herd first down. Run the counteraction. Chris Parker, the five softball running back for Marshall, last week was awfully big. Watch up front here. Little counteraction. Big, big hole there. Chris Parker, what a surge. You don't want those defensive backs making too many stops. We've got an official's timeout on the field. They're going to measure. In a big game like this tonight, field position is going to be so important. And that's a 10-yard gainer for Parker and a Marshall first down. I don't think we're going to see either team romp and stomp and move it the length of the field. The defenses are just too good. Marshall head football coach Jim Donnan was concerned about the way his offense sputtered at the beginning of the first two games of the season against Moorhead State and especially last week against Murray State. First and 10 at the 36 from the eye this time for the Thundering Herd. Parker finds a sliver, crosses the 40 up to the 41 yard line. That's a gain of five on first down. Georgia Southern showing four down linemen. Four folks standing. And three in the secondary. Second down and four. Matchups on the offensive line. Watch true freshman Aaron Ferguson get a face full of Alex Mash. 
Pedro nowhere, nowhere to, go. to go. And it's Alex Mash who wraps him up with a little help from his friends. Alex Mash on the stop. Alex Mass in just two games, 16 tackles, three and a half sacks. Greets Glenn Pedro for Marshall. Pedro needs 42 yards tonight to become the second all-time leading rusher in Marshall University football history. Give him a gain of one. It's third down and three. Marshall will go with two tight ends. Parker, the lone setback. Fakes it to Parker. Donnan has lots Walk of time. He's going long for Will Brown. Knocked away at the last moment. Outstanding defensive play by Sean Austin. I mean, Sean Austin showed some athletic ability. He had Will Brown. Man to man. Little fake here, hoping to squat the linebackers. Here you see Austin and Brown. Austin goes the highest. To tip the ball away. Travis Colquitt in to punt the football for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Georgia Southern blocked two last week. They've got three punts Boy, blocked he hit this, this season. One. He hit this one. And the Marshall Special Teams unit gets on it. Get on it at the four-yard line. 50-yard punt. No return. Georgia Southern has the football deep in their own territory. We're scoreless from Huntington early. Dupree on the keeper. Finds a little bit of running room across the five-yard line and up to the eight. Gain of four yards. It'll be second down and six. Dupree fake it to the fullback. Comes out. Slights the fake to the fullback. Going to keep it the whole way. No question. Gain of five yards in the carry. An exceptional option quarterback. You know, I wasn't really sure what to call this offense, so I asked Coach Stowers. He said, call it the hybrid bone. I guess uh, that's an in-between bone, not a wish bone, not a run and shoot, but something in between. So I said, call it the hybrid bone. Marshall middle linebacker Shannon King has to leave the lineup momentarily. More on Georgia Southern's offense in just a moment. Second down and five. The Eagles at their own nine. Strength. Dupree. Can't turn the corner. William King forced the play back inside, and that's where Roger Johnson came up from his safety position to make the stop. All right, let's talk a little bit about Joe Dupree. A transfer from Georgia, named the starter three days after spring practice at Georgia Southern. He put two-year starter Charles Bostic on the bench. He's from Macon, Georgia, all everything in high school, but he wants to run the football as opposed to throwing the football. Well, his strong suit is running it, so therefore they're going to keep it on the ground if they possibly can. But you don't want to be looking at that third and long. Right now it's third and short, so they can run our throw. Most likely will run. Third and a yard for Georgia Southern. The Eagles trying to keep this drive alive if they can. He's checking at the line of scrimmage. Play clock Nine. down to two. They get the play off. It's the handoff up the middle to the fullback. James Williams again. He's close to the first down. Depending on the spot, looks like he's got it. Yes, he has a first down. First down for the Georgia Southern Eagles at their own 15-yard line. Don't know what they had called, but Dupree checked at the line of scrimmage to the dive. The Marshall defense has only surrendered three points in the first two games of the season. That's the best start for a hurt defensive group since 1961. First and ten for Georgia Southern at the 15-yard line. Handoff again. It's Williams in the middle. Nowhere to go. Ricky Carter and Byron Turner there to make the stop for the Marshall Williams Thunder Herd. Ricky Carter. Ricky Carter. That time a little counteraction. Off the dive. From the Got to mix in a little misdirection to slow the defense down just a little bit. Average size of the offensive line for Georgia Southern, 6'1", 265. The herd defensive line averages 6'3", 245. Second down and eight. Option again Speed the option. pitch. Knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Not much running room for Shafton Fraley. Little speed option. 
to the near side of the short side of the field. Not quite as short this year when they move the hashes. Here's a speed option. A little delay speed option. Make the pitch. Fraley has it. Picks up four big ones. Fraley, a junior from Midledgeville, Georgia. Second year as a starter in the backfield. Has one touchdown to his credit already this season. Strong legs. He can squat 515 pounds. Third down and three. Dive. It's Williams again. And I believe he's, first. he's got the first down, Sonny, up to the 26-yard line. Jamie Williams, more of a tailback type. Great speed, great quickness. Although he runs from the fullback position because of the offense. Another first down. Tyrone Stevens comes in the game. He's more of a bowling ball type. Good shot of Coach Styles across the way. A bull runner. Stevens will absolutely just run up in there and run over folks. Williams, he won't do that before he'll give you that speed and quickness and that juking ability. First and ten, Dupree running for his life. Knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line. That may be a loss of a yard. And that was just a quarterback sprint to the near side, was keeping the ball the whole way. From ground level, an excellent shot of Joe Dupree, the outstanding quarterback for Georgia Southern. You can see he doesn't even look downfield. So you know he's keeping it all the way. Into the short side. Nowhere to go. William King, the first one to get there. Second down and nine for Georgia Southern. Dupree. Dangerous pass, but it is complete. He's able to get the ball to Chris Wright. The Marshall defense is there immediately to bring him down. Just a little three-step drop. Wright runs a hitch outside. Very high percentage type throw. Here's a good look at Tommy Moore. He's been saddled with some injury problems early in the season, but he's in there tonight. Of course, everybody wants to be in there tonight, Sonny. What a huge game for these two teams. Third down and five. Dupree, Shannon King, William King, a host of Kings, wrap him up, and Georgia Southern will be forced to punt the football. Right now, what Marshall's doing with their 4 3 is they're shading their defense to the wide side. Here we are. Dupree fakes the uh, dive to the fullback, keeps the ball, ducks back up inside. Stevenson's the first one to get there. Donahue Stevenson, the senior from Fort Lauderdale, did a good job turning that play inside. Second punt of the night. Punt. Tim Martin from the 21. Flag down. That'll most likely be of the large variety. To the 24-yard line. When you can break that first wave, then you got a chance. Good teams win games with special teams, and Georgia Southern has really excelled in that area in recent seasons. Offense. 434 to go in the first quarter. Marshall has the football. No score between the Herd and the Eagles at Georgia Southern. During Herd of Marshall and the Georgia Southern Eagles, 434 to go first quarter. Marshall's got the football first and 10 from the 12-yard line. Down to the sidelines, another Pepsi sideline report for Mark Martin. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you very much, Dave. You know, there's a drainage ditch located next to Georgia Southern's practice field that the legendary coach, Irk Russell, labeled Beautiful Eagle Creek. Now, prior to each road game, they drain water from that creek, put it in a bottle, and the head coach carries it with him by his side until the conclusion of the practice on that Friday. So yesterday, here at this stadium, they took the water and sprinkled it from one end zone to the other. It's a tradition that's been going on for a long time, and maybe it does have something to do with winning football games because they've won their share at Georgia Southern. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. Parker needs some help. Oh, hits soundly at the 15-yard line after a gain of about four yards. Coming up to make the stop, Michael Morris from his defensive end spot. And 
Michael Morris and Chris Parker got together on the far side and what a collision. Here you can see it. Counteraction. Parker to the far side. Oh, I mean, what a shot. That was Huey, Huey Hunt. Huey Hunt really delivered Hunt's the ball. Hunt's the one that said hello. Second down and six. Boot. Donnan. He's got Inside. Danny White, the big tight end for a first down across the 30, up to the 35-yard line. That's a gain of 19 for Danny White, the junior college transfer from Santa Monica Community College. That misdirection will drive a defense crazy. Here's Todd Donnan off the boot. Looks for White, the big tight end. Big, big hole in his own. Sean Austin makes the stop but not after a big gainer by Danny White. White off to a slow start thus far in his college career. Before that 19-yard gainer, only had one catch for four yards. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Fakes a boot. I mean, Donnan draw. across the middle. I believe that pass was intended for Will Brown at the Georgia Southern 45. I saw white shirts around the football. I was going to say, I, c I counted one green jersey and five uh, white ones. You don't like to throw it in the crowd. Off the uh, draw action. Todd Donnan looks downfield. He would have had to thread that one. You know, early on, the protection for Todd Donnan has been excellent against that 4-3 defense. Two tight ends again for Marshall. Glenn Pedro. Close to the 40-yard line and a gain of five. Pedro, the senior from Staten Island, New York. Boy, watching the line of scrimmage tonight is really going to be something. It's a war down there, no question about it. Sean Goodwin has now checked into the lineup for Marshall. He missed last week's game with a bad foot. He caught five passes in Marshall's season opening win against Moorhead State. Now the Thundering Herd will go with four wide receivers this time on third and five from their own 40. They spread the field, a one-back set. Donnan on the run, guns it, nearly intercepted. The pass was intended for Will Brown, and Alton Hitson nearly picked it off. Hitson from the free safety position lays out and able to knock the ball down. Here you see Todd Donnan, an excellent shot of the Marshall quarterback. Looking down inside, Hitson almost came up with a big catch or a big interception. He was a quarterback at Valdosta High School in Georgia, and he led his team to back-to-back -back 4A championships. They're coming after it. Excellent, Excellent kick. Punt. The ball is loose, picked up by Melvin Cunningham. They're going to blow it dead at the 18-yard line. The ball hit Dexter Dawson and Melvin Cunningham from Red Jacket, West Virginia, with another big special teams play. It was blown dead at the 18, but what a big play by Cunningham on the special teams. They're calling it a fumble. Marshall's got the first big break of the football game. The Thundering Herd has the ball when we return to Huntington. No score in the first quarter. Big break of the game, Sonny. Dexter Dawson cannot feel the punt. Melvin Cunningham for the Marshall Thundering Herd is there to make the recovery. Marshall's got the football first and 10 from the Georgia Southern 18. Here's another look at it. Want to catch the ball on the dead run. I'm not really sure why it was blown dead there. I would love to hear an explanation of that. Boy, that Melvin Cunningham has a nose for the football on the special teams. He was a running back at Make One High School in West Virginia. This is a formation that Marshall's used for the first time this year, a power set. And Georgia Southern swarms the ball. They were all over it. Glenn Pedro with a minimal gain, possibly two yards, at least second and eight. You got three backs back there, a power set. You want to pound it? Georgia Southern with great movement up front there. Marshall inserted the big guys. Buck Manning was in on that play, all 360 pounds of him, the big freshman offensive tackle. And Chris Gross was also in there, the third running back in that full house backfield. Second down and nine. Draw. Fakes the draw. Donnan has good protection. And he was trying to get it to Tim Martin at the goal line, and he had double coverage. Again, a little too tall. 
Great shot of the folks on the bank on the overflow crowd. Excellent coverage that time by Sean Austin from Georgia Southern. You fake the draw, hoping to squat the linebackers. Gives you a little more room to get it in there. Boy, there wasn't it was, any room on that occasion. It is really tough sledding against that Georgia Southern defensive unit, and their secondary is tough as nails. I told you before it ever started, David, this tonight would be a defensive battle. Third down and nine. Marshall with three wide receivers. Pedro, the lone setback. Quick hitter. Tries to get the football to Will Brown at the 10. It was nearly intercepted again. Sean Austin now on the coverage. Austin on the coverage. Just a little three-step drop trying to hit the flanker. Brown on a slant pattern. Austin had excellent coverage. So David Merrick will come in and attempt the field goal. This will be a 35-yard attempt. And with Aaron Ferguson on the offensive line tonight, Marshall has to go to a true freshman, Josh Seamster from Danville, Virginia, as the long snapper. Chad O'Shea is the holder for the herd. Yes. David Merrick hammers it home. And Marshall breaks on the board early. They convert the turnover into three points. Marshall leads Georgia Southern now 3-0 with a minute 39 to go in the first quarter. And that gives that overflow crowd here in Huntington something to cheer about tonight. I'll tell you what, these three points could be huge. Field goals tonight are going to be like touchdowns most evenings. This is just the second conference game ever for Georgia Southern. They won their league opener last week against the Citadel 16 to 6. So they knocked off the defending Southern Conference champs. Now they've come to Huntington tonight with hopes of knocking off the defending NCAA 1AA champs. Look at this crowd here this evening. That is a 1AA championship looking crowd. This game was sold out, Sonny, about 5 o'clock tonight. All the tickets sold after 5 o'clock, standing room only. So we believe we've got a crowd somewhere in the vicinity of 28 to 30,000 tonight. This should be the third largest crowd in the history of Marshall Stadium. Four plays, one yard, in under a minute, Merrick converts it with a 34-yard field goal. Two great defenses going at it tonight. Georgia Southern and Marshall. It doesn't get any better than this when you're talking about NCAA 1AA football. Great shot of uh, Coach Jim Donnett, the Marshall head coach. You can see he would like a word with the offense. And his son Todd standing close at hand. I'm sure his dad doesn't have any trouble getting his son's attention and vice versa. Merrick set to kick off. Chris Wright set to receive it for Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern has excellent return, people. Wright will get the opportunity here from the five-yard line. And he's got some room. Tripped up at the 20. Coming up to make the stop on the special teams unit, Brian Stump for the Thundering Herd. And so Georgia Southern has an opportunity to answer that field goal by Marshall University. If you like defense, you got to love this get together this evening. Got some great streaks going in this game. Georgia Southern has defeated eight consecutive Southern Conference opponents. They haven't lost to a team from the Southern Conference since they were beaten by Furman back in the 1988 1AA playoffs. Again, the dive. Not much running room for the fullback, James Williams. We'll see the dive at least 30 times here this evening. You run that flex bone or hydra bone or whatever kind of bone you want to call it. The dive is key. Sonny, you know as a former coach that the number of snaps your offense gets sometimes is the key to victory. Last week against Murray State, Marshall only got 60 offensive plays. Normally, they'd like to get about 85 offensive plays. They won't, they won't get it here tonight. Dupree, quick hitter, complete. Pass is complete to Darren Willis. Willis with a sidestep past Twan Reynolds takes it up to the 38-yard line. That's a gain of 14. Willis actually makes Reynolds miss. Little three-step drop. 
Willis catches a ball, split in with great speed and quickness. Makes Reynolds miss. Willis is in graduate school at Georgia Southern in sports management. Transfer from East Carolina. The cousin of former Steeler JT Thomas. Handoff up the middle. It's Williams again. He's across the 40, up to about the 44-yard line for a gain of five. Willis and Dupuy were high school teammates. One transfer, transfers in from Georgia, the other from East Carolina. And I think because Willis came from East Carolina first, that affected Dupuy's decision. Second down and five. This could be the last play of the first quarter. Dupree, late pitch, Williams tries to stretch it out for the first down marker. He is short, knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line. It'll Brian be Stump. It'll be third in a yard. Brian Stump from his linebacker position. Little reverse option here. Dupree pitches back. Stump makes the stop. Third down, one yard to go. Williams, a ball carrier. James Williams, great speed and quickness. Don't give him a seam because he'll burn you. Stumps in the lineup for Marshall because the normal middle linebacker, Shannon King, had to leave during the first series. Dupree, he's got the first down. Brought down shy of the midfield strike, but he picks up enough yardage for the first down. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know what you want to call the bone, but boy, when you've got a quarterback and fullback that are exceptional runners, they absolutely will drive you crazy. And that's going to end the first quarter here, David. 15 minutes in the books in Huntington. An overflow crowd looking on. A battle for NCAA 1AA football supremacy. Marshall 3, Georgia Southern nothing. Second quarter from Huntington. Marshall with a 3 nothing lead over the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Let's go down to the sidelines. And Mark, Mark, go ahead, Mark. David, right now, Marshall's defense playing without one of their fine linebackers in Shannon King. His head hit the turf very hard, and right now they're taking a precaution. He is up on the sideline. Appears to be okay, but they had an ice pack on his head, so they're keeping him out for a few series just to make sure that uh, nothing serious did happen, and we'll keep you posted on Shannon King's condition. All right, Mark, do you anticipate he'll be able to return to the game? Talk to Jaime Perez. He did not think that it was serious, but we'll have to wait and see at this point. Again, they have him out right now. The ice pack, though, is off the head, so I guess that would be a good sign. All right. Thank you very much, Shannon King, from right here at Huntington on the sidelines for now. Dr. Jose Ricard, the outstanding uh, team doctor and physician. I'll tell you what, Dr. Ricard, they don't come any better. Talking over with Shannon King, and if those two can communicate, you'll be back on the field. We talked uh, in the first quarter, Sonny, about offensive plays thus far. Georgia Southern has the edge in that category 22 to 16 over the thundering herd and the time of possession is all Georgia Southern they've held on to the football for over nine minutes Marshall's had the football for just under six minutes thus far first and ten for the Eagles at their own 49 yard line as we begin the second quarter Dupree quick shot complete out of bounds at the Marshall 48 got the ball to Dexter Dawson Dawson another with great speed and quickness Three-step drop, get the ball to him, and let your flanker or split in, let make it happen. Dexter Dawson, a sophomore from Camilla, Georgia, lettered as a true freshman last year. So he's in his second season of significant action for Tim Stowers in Georgia Southern. Gain it to. Very elusive receiver. Dupree wants to put it up again. And the pass is short at the Marshall 35 yard line, tried to get the ball to Fraley. Ball just a little bit underthrown as he sprinted to the far side. Dupree injured the index finger on his throwing hand against Savannah State. When he was trying to throw the football in his follow through, he knocked it off a Savannah State helmet. They say his hand is all right. He kind of short armed that ball. Georgia Southern, three for five on third down conversions. They'll roll. The dice again, third and eight from the Marshall 48. When you look at third and long, you don't like to throw it. Puts you in a very awkward position. 
Georgia Southern wants to talk about it. So the Eagles burn the first of their three timeouts. 14.50 to go in the first half. Georgia Southern looking over this important third down play. Marshall with a 3 nothing lead. Eight. Georgia Southern at the Marshall 48-yard line. And this is an obvious passing down for almost any other team, but you really don't know what Georgia Southern's going to do in that flex bone. Dupree, incomplete, tried to slip it to right at the Marshall 39-yard line, and the Eagles will be forced to punt again. Ball was nowhere near the intended receiver. Chris Wright, Dupree trying to throw it on the run. Not real, real comfortable when they put it in the air. Bill Thatcher for his third punt of the night. And boy, these punters here tonight have been exceptional both for Marshall and Georgia Southern. Short kick. Happens every time when you try to compliment them, it backfires. A punt of only 20 yards for Thatcher. And Marshall will have the football first and 10 from their own 28-yard line. We'll step aside momentarily and return to Huntington in just a moment. Three to go in the first half. Marshall has a 3-0 lead over Georgia Southern in a game that's been dominated by the two defenses thus far. A fumbled punt by Dexter Dawson was converted into a 34-yard field goal by David Merrick in the first quarter, and that's our only score thus far on the board. Thundering herd, first and 10. Here comes Chris Parker trying to find some running room across the 30, up to about the 32-yard line for a gain of three. For Georgia Southern, you're looking at four down linemen as we look at this Budweiser scoreboard. Appalachian State, 0-2, and, and they're behind tonight, trailing Wake in the second quarter. Western Carolina, a winner over the Citadel, so the Bulldogs are 0-3. East Tennessee State spoils the homecoming at VMI, 10-7. Second down at 7 for Marshall. Draw. Parker. Find some running room across the 35 to the 37-yard line. That's a gain of five. And there wasn't a whole lot of room there. Just outstanding athletic ability is what that was. A little draw. Chris Parker. It's a little bit of a seam. Third down. Two yards to go. Paul Carroll makes a stop for Georgia Southern. Talking defense on the Marshall sidelines. William King, Brian Stump, Roger Johnson, Mickey Matthews, the defensive coordinator over there. Once again, full house backfield. Now Martin comes in motion. Parker ahead of steam. Very close. Depends on the spot. Parker needs the 39-yard line for the first down. More scores. Furman and Wofford finished the game today in a 14-all tie. That was a huge uh, upset of sort. Gardner-Webb leads UTC 14-7 oh. in the first period. Just a comment on that tie between Wofford and Furman. That is not a conference game, obviously. If it was, they would have gone to a tiebreaker. But Wofford, very impressive early in the season. They've already defeated the Citadel. Marshall got the first down. Screen. Pretty heads up play by quarterback Todd Donnan. He knows there's nowhere to go with the football. Scott Davis, he stays at home for Georgia Southern. So Donnan just throws the ball over Chris Parker's head. Donnan was backpedaling like a man, man, madman, and you would too if Alex Mash was in your face. Alex Mash has made a whole lot of folks backpedal. Second and ten. Parker, the lone setback this time. Option. Donnan with the pitch to Parker. Not a lot of running room over there. Sean Austin and Michael Morris, the defensive end, come up and make the hit on Chris Parker. Little speed option. They like to run it against a blitz. There's nobody on the perimeter. It is what a down. stick outside there by Sean Austin. 
And, and the folks from Marshall want to talk about it. Third down and seven, and Marshall opts to Marshall. burn a timeout. 12-11 to go in the first half. Marshall facing a key third down. They'll talk it over. The Thundering Herd with a 3-0 lead. Dave Weekly, along with Sonny Randall and Mark Martin tonight. Great game. Marshall 3, Georgia Southern nothing. Marshall called a timeout to talk over this third and seven situation from their own 43-yard line. The Thundering Herd tonight, two of five in third down conversions. Sprint. Donnan as a man. It's Ricky Carter, but he is shy of the first down, I believe. You've got to run a pattern so you go far enough for the first down. Carter had to come back just a little bit for the ball. Brandon Roselle on the stop. Todd Donnan on the sprint. Looks for Carter. One yard to go. He'll be about a yard short. But I promise they'll punt the ball. They're going to punt it this time. But remember, Sonny, last week against Murray State, Marshall went for it. Fourth and two from their own 39-yard line and didn't make it. A whole lot difference going against this Georgia Southern defense and going against Murray State. You said it. Play clock down to four. They get the playoff. Colquitt with a moon ball. Dawson does not take the fair catch, and he breaks free. Needs him some help. Cuts it back. Finally brought down at the Marshall 36-yard line. That's one of those balls that go so high, it's awfully hard to cover. And you can see that Dawson is all fired up. He's trying to make up for that punt he fumbled in the first quarter that Marshall converted into a field goal. I thought at first he signaled for a fair catch, but we get another look here, and he did not. He's got some shake and some speed and some quickness. Roger Johnson makes the stop. It's a 56-yard punt return for Dexter Dawson. First and 10 for Georgia Southern at the Marshall 36. Ball is loose on the carpet. Marshall's got it. It's Donahue Stevenson on the recovery. Back to back big plays. First, the long punt return by is. Dawson. And now the fumble. Looked like a poor exchange from the quarterback and fullback. Williams never got the football. And I'm not real sure what's taking place down there on the field right now. It looks like a delay of game penalty is pending against Marshall. I really believe it was a little bit too much excitement. A celebration, I should say. Excitement, celebration, they go hand in hand. <laughs> and the officials were going to be awfully tough on that this year. Let's see what it is. Taking the ball off the field play. Took, you're not supposed to take the, field, the ball off the field of play. It's Coach Donnan from Marshall gets an explanation. Yes, you're supposed to leave it out there. Ron Buckner, the referee, with the call, and Stevenson, in his excitement, took the ball off the field, and it cost Marshall five. Nevertheless, they've got it first and ten at their own 31-yard line. And Todd Donnan tripped up as he backed away from the center. Boy, both quarterbacks now. I'm not sure what the deal is. Todd Donnan, the junior quarterback, the son of the head coach, Jim Donnan, from Norman, Oklahoma. But it's not like he's a novice. He's already got 17 career touchdown passes. That young man's done an exceptional job. He'd like to have that playback. Second down and 13. Three wide receivers for Marshall. Draw. The handoff to Pedro. Gets a good block from Will Brown and scoots up to the 34-yard line. Rob Stockton carrier. comes from the secondary to make the stop on Pedro. Little delay draw. You hope those linebackers will flush or take a pretty good drop. Here's the draw. Pedro bounces outside. Rob Stockton from the secondary makes the stop. 
along with Paul Carroll. Marshall's left tackle, Kevin McCarty, was able to hold his block on Michael Morris just long enough so Pedro could try and turn the corner. Now it's third and seven from the 34. Danny White is open, and he's got the first down. Danny White with his second catch of the night, and Marshall converts on a big third down play to keep the drive alive. Straight drop back. Danny White, the Marshall tight end, runs a crossing pattern. Todd Donnan, straight drop back, seven step drop. Danny White, the big tight end, open as he runs across the pattern. Gets the ball, gets the first down, the chains move. Marshall will go with two tight ends. Casey Hill in motion. Pedro into Georgia Southern Territory to the 36-yard line. That's going to be a gain of five, and that plays a winner on first down, especially if you want to run the ball, control the clock, Sonny. No question about that, David. That big offensive line of Marshall right now are knocking folks with the white jerseys off the ball. When you knock them off the ball, those big backs will get you four or five. Second and five at the 47. Marshall has a 3-0 lead. We're inside of nine minutes to go in the first half. It's been a real battle of defenses tonight thus far in Huntington. Sold out crowd. Battle for NCAA 1AA football supremacy tonight. Draw sweep. Parker with a head of steam. Breaking tackles. Takes it to the Georgia Southern 37. That was just great individual effort. Todd Donnan, Marshall's quarterback, got a little tangle up as he hands the ball. A hand back. Runs into Parker. Parker squares those shoulders to the line of scrimmage. You can see he does most of this on his own. Again, when they're coming from the secondary to make the stop, which Nick Davis did that time, you know the chains are moving. Parker on his way to a good night. Here he comes again, this time on the right side. Tried to pick his hole and wanted to cut it back, but was unable to do so. Sean Austin made the stop. Boy, Sean Austin from his quarterback position has played some kind of football game here in the first half. Sean Austin may be one of the best athletes in the Southern Conference. He can squat 575 pounds. He's got a vertical jump of 35 inches. Michael Jordan, that's in, that's that's his in, class. That's in the big category. He played his high school football for Georgia Southern offensive line coach Mike Hodges. And together, those guys produced two Georgia State High School titles. Gain of one, second down and nine. It's Pedro this time. Gets a good block from Danny White. And that was a tough, tough four-yard gain for Glenn Pedro. Brian Sellers, the outstanding nose guard for Georgia Southern. They had to make the stop on Pedro. But not before he picked up about four. Here we see it, a little hand back by Todd Donnan to Pedro. Brian Sellers makes the stop as he wraps up Pedro on the far side. Sellers, a junior college transfer, gets the job done. Third down and six. This could be fourth down territory for Marshall. Donnan, back to pass. Going He's going to go for the end zone and Will Brown. Touchdown, Marshall thundering herd. And Brown just took the ball away from Danny Brent. It was Ali Ali in free. Todd Donnan puts enough air onto the ball. Marshall hits for the big play, a 34-yard touchdown hookup. Todd Donnan to Will Brown, the senior from Harrisburg, PA. Will Brown goes up with Danny Brent. Little fake there. Donnan, plenty of air onto the ball. Here you see Britt Brown. Brown goes a little bit higher to make an exceptional catch. Will Brown. Yes. David Merrick adds the extra point. And Marshall is able to convert the fumble by Georgia Southern into a touchdown hookup. Donnan to Will Brown. It's 10-0, thundering herd.
Nothing lead their fans love it down to the sidelines. What's up Mark Martin? All right, David prior to the long punt return or after the long punt return by uh, Georgia Southern I was listening in and the offensive line coach for Marshall was telling his offensive lineman Just stay with your blocks because we're going to get the football back and we're going to take it down and we're going to score well Marshall's offensive line helping their uh, coach Greg Atkins look pretty good as they take it in from the pass from Donnan to Will Brown Thanks Mark scoring drive seven plays 69 yards in just over four minutes Donnan and Brown hook up for a 34 yard score Merrick gets the left foot in it short kickoff very short to the 25 yard line for Georgia Southern that's Terry Lester taking it from the 25 to the 35 so Georgia Southern has good field position as they take the football with six minutes and 53 seconds to go in the first half what you'd like to be able to do if you're Marshall is keep it out of the hands of those deep people because they're so dangerous Brian Stump still in there at middle linebacker for the thundering herd Shannon King unable to return yet Dupree the handoff not much not much running room for right and it's Stump who makes the stop and I tell you what Stump has come on strong for Marshall inside he's having an exceptional game here in the first half little misdirection hand back Chris Wright the ball carrier stump the tackler at the line of scrimmage Brian stump from Calhoun County High School a criminal justice major Dupree able to slip a tackle but stump trips him up across the 40 and up to about the 42 yard line Dupree slipped away from Donahue Stevenson here you can see he fakes the dive out on the option on the perimeter Donahue Stevenson's able to slow him down but stump has to make the stop once again third down and two and now the Marshall fans get back in it rising to their feet backing their defensive unit Dupree goes up the middle to the fullback fumble ball is loose let's see if they blow it down blow it dead and that is the case they're gonna say he was down the ground caused the fumble according to the officials Georgia Southern has the first down and they keep the drive alive Greg Forsythe makes the stop but enough for the first down and to change the move. Tyrone Stevens picks up the first down for Georgia Southern. Stevens at bull runner. The big back who gets the short yardage. Runs up in there awfully strong for the first down. First and ten for Georgia Southern. Option to three with the spin. Late pitch. Room. Gets it to Williams and he's into Marshall territory knocked out of bounds at the 45 yard line Again they come back with Jamie Williams a little misdirection here back into the boundary on the far side Little counter option Dupree pitches to Williams excellent block out front Williams does the rest as he dances a sideline Roger Johnson knocks him out of bounds Second down and a yard for Georgia Southern at the Marshall 45 yard line. That misdirection will slow the linebackers down. Dive up the middle again and running room for the first down to the Marshall 42 yard line. It's Williams. The Eagles of Georgia Southern trying to answer the Marshall touchdown. Marshall, at the Marshall rotating their down lineman Eric Clawson exits Chris Hamilton from Charleston West Virginia comes into the lineup but look at Marco the thundering herd mascot first and ten for Georgia Southern at the Marshall 42 again they try the middle Williams across the 40 down to the 39 yard line not much running room this time Sonny as Marshall stuffs the play pretty well again the counter misdirection Coach Stars, the fine head coach from Georgia Southern, looks on. 
Hey, he's one of the good old boys, but what a heck of a football coach and a, just a fine gentleman. A former lineman at Auburn. He's been at Georgia Southern now nine seasons, five years as an assistant to Eric Russell, four years as the head coach. He won a national championship in his first season at Statesboro as the head man. Counter option. Dupree finds the hole. And enough for Brown close to the first down. It'll be about a yard short. Dupree, Roger, third, third and real short. Roger Johnson made the stop. Dupree looked like he was bottled up. Watch a little... Uh, a little whirly bit option here. Dupuis, when you when you turn him back up inside there, he goes north and south for the football. And we're looking at third and about a half yard. An exceptional runner with the football. And but they got to talk about it here. Dupree calls a timeout. That will leave Georgia Southern. Are born in Georgia. You know, there's nine players on the Marshall team for the state of Georgia. There are a whole lot of football players out there from the state of Georgia. Most all of them from Georgia Southern, but nine from Marshall. Dupree wants to turn the corner. Can't do it. His forward progress might give him the first down. It's going to be close. It depends on the spot. You knew they'd keep the ball in their main man's hands. Joe Dupree. Looking for that seam. Great individual effort, second effort by the quarterback, Roger Johnson, and a host of Marshall players try to keep him from the first down. Looks like it's going to be fourth. But I can promise you this is four down territory. For Georgia Southern, Kofi Broadnax needs help getting off the field. Big nose guard from Georgia Southern. That's a heck of a stat right there. Fourth down and a yard for Georgia Southern at the Marshall 33. Dive over the top. That's enough for the first. James Williams over the top, over the pile, and he appears to have enough for the first down. Williams just went airborne. You'd like to be able to keep those big people down up front. Williams over the top, and the chains will move. Tim Stowers, the head coach of Georgia Southern, really had the option there to go to the field goal. Reed Haley kicked three last week against the Citadel, including a 45-yarder. Let's watch, watch him dive. pick up the first down. Williams in the air. That kind of surge will get you a first down. Tell you what, you got to meet him in midair to keep him from getting the first down. That's a first. The only way you're going to stop him when he goes airborne is for your linebacker or defensive back to meet him in midair. That time, Marshall didn't have anybody there to meet him. So the chains move for Tim Stowers in Georgia Southern. Awfully important drive here just before halftime. This will be the 10th play of this drive. First and 10 for Georgia Southern at the Marshall 32. Again, it's Williams up inside across the 30 to the Marshall 29-yard line. It's not pretty, but it's effective. I guarantee you, very, very effective. That's the reason they won so many national championships down at Georgia Southern. You get the big people up front, folks chopped. There's going to be some seams. Two exceptional defenses here tonight. As Georgia Southern wants to talk it over. So Georgia Southern has opted to burn a timeout. Joe Dupree and Tim Stowers talking things over. The hip man and his quarterback, you cannot have any better communication. You know, one of the key matchups in tonight's game has to be her defensive end, Rodney Garrett, the All-American candidate on Georgia Southern freshman tackle, Jamie Glover. We have not called Garrett's number very much tonight, so Glover obviously is doing a good job. Hard to watch him all, but I guarantee he's had to do a good job to keep Rodney Garrett out of the backfield. They're very, very high on that youngster. And if you're looking on the Marshall defense for Shannon King, he was injured on the first series of the game. Hit his helmet against the turf very, very hard. Has not been able to return. Ryan Stump, the freshman from Calhoun County High School in West Virginia, Grantsville, West Virginia, in the lineup now at middle linebacker for Marshall. The Marshall head coach, as you look down there on the field, Jim Donovan, he's trying to get the crowd stirred up a little bit. 
This crowd was hooping and hollering when Marshall was up after the touchdown pass, but this long drive by Georgia Southern has quiet the crowd considerably. Screen right. Tries to cut it back inside across the 25 and near the first down marker at the 23-yard line. You run that little hitch pass outside. Dupuis takes the three-step drop, gets the ball to right. When you got it in Wright's hand, most of the time, there's a three-step drop. Two yards to go. There's Wright. Picks it up off the turf. Ducks back up inside. Picks up pretty good yardage. Third and short. Five minutes off the clock on this current drive. Option. Dupree with the late pitch. Fraley tries to turn the corner. Got a flag. Got a late flag on the far side. Let's see what it is. Fraley is the long area. Fraley is knocked out of bounds, shy of the first down. We'll check out the penalty. Yes. Dupree fakes the dive to the fullback, comes out on the perimeter, pitches back. Fraley has the pitch. Not sure what the call was. Twan Reynolds made a nice tackle. Folding. And they'll bring this one back. A costly penalty on third and short against Georgia Southern. Penalties will drive a head coach absolutely crazy. Here's the call. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat the down. What you'd like to say to him if you can't block him, don't hold him. But all the player wants to do is to get it done. And it's all right if you don't get caught. For a team that runs that option, third and one is a heck of a lot easier to call than third and 11, obviously. We'll see if Georgia Southern has to put the football up. The line of scrimmage now is the 32-yard line. Counter option. Dupree, late pitch to Williams. And Marshall's defense snuffed it out very well. Good pursuit over there by Twan Reynolds and Chris Hamilton and Donahue Stevenson. Watch this counter option here. Awfully dangerous by Dupree. Fourth down. Eight yards Watch this last second pitch. Williams does a heck of a job to hold on there. And we're looking at a field goal. Reed Haley is in to attempt the field goal. He had three last week against the Citadel. His longest was a 45-yarder. This will be from 48. Enough leg. And yes. good. Plenty of leg. Haley with the long field goal for Georgia Southern, and the Eagles are on the board late in the first half. Well, that Marshall defense, they bent, but they did not break. And Georgia Southern came away with points, which they had to do. Marshall has yet to give up a touchdown this season. Haley converts on the field goal. And now in the field goal department, he is four of six this season. And I tell you what, from 48, that was plenty long. Only one touchdown thus far tonight. Todd Donnan with a touchdown pass on Marshall's last possession to Will Brown. And now the thundering herd will get the football, and they've got some time. A minute 21 to go in the first half. They have two timeouts. Georgia Southern has burned all three of their timeouts here in the first half. We talked about it at the outset. If you like great defense, boy, you'll love this one here this evening. Classic Eagles scoring drive. 13 plays, 35 yards in five and a half minutes. Haley capped it with a 47-yard field goal. Eric Smith will kick off the football. Tim Martin set to receive it. He's going to give him a chance. Melvin Cunningham. Out to the 32-yard line. Ball comes loose, but they go blow it dead. Boy, Melvin Cunningham, every time he gets his hands on the football, I very find a way exciting. to put the ball in his hands. Melvin Cunningham on the return. It is first Cunningham, the had, the Cunningham had the option to stay in the end zone, Sonny, but he opted to bring it out. Cunningham saw some daylight. Martin gave the signal. Cunningham does the rest. Watch the ball pop, pop out right here at the end. 
as the ball as he hits the ground it pops out is blown dead 32 yard kickoff return here comes Chris Parker across the 40 yard line brought down shy of the first down or it may be close enough to measure a gain of nearly 10 for Chris Parker who's had a big first half when Chris Parker squares those shoulders boy right from ground level look at the surge by Parker a lot of a lot of help up front look at this hole huge Parker does the rest they're gonna measure it's close enough Chain gang is coming out to measure for the first down. You know, we haven't really called the name of Alex Mash that much in the first half tonight, Sonny, and I think that play was an indication of why. One of the ways you try to contain an outstanding defensive lineman is to cut off his pursuit, run the football right at him. Exactly right, and block him with two people. <laughs> That's the other way. Parker does pick up the first down. A minute five to go. Marshall with a 10-3 lead. Stick with us at halftime. Mark Martin will have our Pepsi halftime report. And a look at Marshall offensive lineman Chris Deaton. A little hand back to the fullback. Glenn Pedro across the 45. He'll pound and the clock will continue to run. And Todd Donnan calls a timeout. 47 seconds left to go in the first half. Marshall has one timeout remaining. Are you surprised in the last minute 21 that Marshall had when they started this drive, Sonny? They haven't put the ball up more? No, not really. You're in front 10-3. You're playing an exceptional football team. You do not want to turn the ball over with just a little time left in the first half. Take your 10-3 and go to the house. If you pound it, pound it enough maybe to try a field goal. But they'll have to go a ways to get into Merrick's uh, range. Realistically, Marshall needs to get down to the Georgia Southern 30 for a realistic field goal attempt for Merrick. So Marshall needs about another 25 yards. And the brain trust, boy, on one side of the field. Defensively, they're getting after it. On the other side, they Marshall offense. That Marshall offensive line, this is the third different starting rotation for Marshall in three games, and they've done a good job. Awfully tough uh, to get that continuity. When you're having to make changes each week because of injury. Second down and five for Marshall at the 46 yard line. Todd Donnan with a touchdown pass tonight to Will Brown. This has been a rock and sock of affair. I'll tell you what, we can hear the hitting up here, and we're a long ways away. Three wide receivers, Sean Goodwin to the left, Will Brown, and Tim Martin to the right. Ricky Carter's got all kinds of room. He's got the first down and he's out of bounds at the Georgia Southern 47 yard line. You get the ball to Ricky Carter, the flanker. He runs a square out pattern, gets what he can get, and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. 41 seconds left to go in the first half. Todd Donnick, a little five step drop, throws the ball with pretty good zip to the far side. Martin gets what he can get and gets out of bounds. First and 10 at the 47. Draw. Huge hole for Glenn Pedro. But then the pursuit stops the forward progress of Pedro. He reaches the 40-yard line. Clock is running. Inside a half a minute to go. Marshall has one timeout remaining. They opt not to use it in this situation. They'll have to put it up here to stop it. A little delay draw to Pedro. Todd Donnan. Done and into a crowd. And the pass is picked off by Darius Dawson. Dawson still on his feet. Finally brought down at the Marshall 47 yard line. Dawson didn't run like a linebacker, I can tell you that, with three ticks left. Ran like a defensive back. Dawson, the senior, comes up with a big, big play. Now with only three seconds left to go. Here's the, uh, I'm telling you what, that was an exceptional, inter that was a heck of an interception by Dawson. And then he's having to run in the open field like a back. Trips right, three wide receivers to the right this for Georgia This is that Hail Mary. Last play of the first half. Throw it as far as you can throw it and hope something good will happen. Up for grabs, intercepted. Roger Johnson picks it off. 
And that ends the first half. Roger Johnson comes up for the interception for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And the green and white of Marshall University. They head back to the sidelines to the facilities building with a 10-3 lead over Georgia Southern. I'm Marshall with a 10-3 lead over the Eagles of Georgia Southern and Sonny Randall. This game has been as good as advertised. Only one touchdown in the first half. A touchdown hookup between Todd Donnan and Will Brown. And the keys to the game tonight thus far, special teams and turnovers. Well, they have. Uh, I'm telling you, it's just been unbelievable. It really has, David. Uh, both teams have just been exceptional on defense. We said it at the outset. There was no question. I think the two coaches felt like whichever offense could execute the best here this evening, they would win the football game. I'm not sure either one of them going to execute that well because they're going to be facing great defenses all night long. We've seen 30 minutes of it. I promise we're going to see 30 more. I think Georgia Southern got a lot of confidence in that long drive at the end of the first half that led to their only score of the first half, a long field goal, a 13-play drive that nearly ate up six minutes. Well, we talked about the importance of the football game. They're playing it that way. I'll tell you what, it's far from over. Don't get this one decided just yet. 30 more minutes will decide it. We expected the defenses to dominate. They are doing just that. Marshall with a 10-3 lead over the Georgia Southern Eagles. Mark Martin has our Pepsi sideline report at halftime in just a moment when we return to Huntington. Please stay tuned. For football in Huntington, West Virginia, where two 1AA powers square off here. Marshall leading Georgia Southern at halftime by a score of 10 to 3. Welcome, everybody, to our Pepsi halftime report. They said it would be a defensive struggle, and for the most part, that is what we have seen here in this first half of action. Todd Donnan's 34 yard touchdown pass to Will Brown proving to be the difference in this first half of action. You know, from last year's 1AA National Championship, that Georgia Southern, as you might expect, with the edge on the ground. Marshall has the edge through the air, 80 to 25, and Marshall also has the edge in total yards, 167 to 144. Maybe the biggest category, Sonny, of the first half stats has to be turnovers. Georgia Southern with three, Marshall with just one turnover, a late interception. And three turnovers, and you feel like you're just down a touchdown? I'm sure the folks of Georgia Southern feel awfully good about the first half. As far as the time of possession goes, nearly even, so you really have to give Marshall the nod in that category. You expect that option attack of Georgia Southern to really eat the clock when they've got the football. Well, they control the offense. They control the clock. That's what they would like to do, and they've done a pretty good job of it here in the first half. And talking of, about controlling the clock, we heard from Jim Donnan that he's concerned about some of his frontline guys who may have been hurt in the first half on the defensive side of the football. We'll have to see who lines up here in the second half. Marshall won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so the Thundering Herd will get the football to begin the third quarter of play. We expected a struggle, a defensive-minded game, and that's what we've got. Georgia Southern and Marshall, both of these teams, powerhouses in NCAA 1AA football. Now they're league rivals, both in the Southern Conference. Georgia Southern in their debut season in the league in 1993. Both defenses nationally ranked, and after watching the first half, you can understand why. Eric Smith will kick off for Georgia Southern. And Tim Martin is set to receive the football for the Marshall Thundering Herd, and the third quarter is underway. Short kick taken by Chris Parker. And he is knocked out of bounds by Eric Smith, the kicker for the Eagles. And if he doesn't bump him out of bounds, Parker's going a long way. Anytime you get your kicker knocking somebody out of bounds, you feel like you're way ahead of the game. They take their best football players and put them on the special teams. Parker, as Smith knocks him out of bounds. Nice kickoff return by Chris Parker, and Marshall's got good field position. First and 10 to start the second half from their own 37-yard line. Thundering Herd with a 10-3 lead. Marshall with two tight ends in the game at this point. Lone setback is Glenn Pedro. Boot. Donnan fakes it to him. The pass caught by Will Brown. A diving catch at the Georgia Southern 49-yard line. Tell you what, there was some real zip on that football. That Don Donnan throws it a long ways. Gate of 14. Watch Will Brown lay out. Fakes the boot. 
Donovan looking to the far side. Has to throw it a long ways. Throws it on a rope. Will Brown lays out. Comes up with a big catch. And the chains move. Todd Donnan showed off some good arm strength there. First and 10. Marshall at the Georgia Southern 49. Parker. That's a gain of eight. Down to the Georgia Southern 41-yard line. Just a lead. Straight lead. When Pedro, the fullback, leading Parker up in there. Excellent block by the fullback. Parker does the rest. You'll take second and four all night long. Parker got behind his guys on the right side. Aaron Ferguson, the right guard, and the right tackle veteran Chris Deaton for a nice gainer. One back set. Pedro tries the right side, and he's got some running room. Close to another first down. He's got a first down for the Thundering Herd. Glenn Pedro on the pickup. That's enough to move the chains. Marshall has another first down. Marshall mixing their plays very well here to start the second half. Roderick Christopher made the stop for Georgia Southern. He's a transfer from Ohio State. First and 10 for Marshall at the Georgia Southern 38-yard line. The Thundering Herd taking the second half kickoff and on the move. Pedro will try the right side, the left side rather this time. Ball's on the ground, ball's loose. They're going to pull it dead. Across the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. That's a gain of five. So we've talked so much about the way Georgia Southern likes to control the football and the clock with their ground game. We're getting a look now at Marshall's ground game. Both teams felt like if their offense could control the football and the clock, they would have a big edge. And the senior from Staten Island, New York, Glenn Pedro, now the second leading rusher all time in Marshall history. On the sprint, Donnan tried to get to get the football to Ricky Carter, and he dropped it at the 30-yard line. In and out of his hands, an excellent throw by Todd Donnan. Ricky Carter could not hang on. Coming right at you. Todd Donnan looking at Carter. Put a good zip on the ball. Wanting to run before he caught it. And the sophomore from Lynchburg could not hold on. Third down and six from the 34-yard line. One back set. Looking for his tight end. Donnan's going to tuck it under. Nowhere to go. And he is hit hard by Brandon Roselle coming up from his cornerback spot. Roselle, an exceptional athlete in the Georgia Southern secondary. And David Merrick in the field goal team coming on to the field for Marshall. It's going to be a long one. This will be just about at his limit. A 50-yard attempt. If it's a field goal. They're lining up in a field goal formation. But don't bet everything you got, they're going to kick it. That's awfully long. 50 yards. On the way. Got yes. it. That's a 50-yard field goal for David Merrick. That's his longest. And that ties a Marshall Stadium record. David Merrick puts it through for three from 50 yards out. Marshall 13, Georgia Southern 3. Marshall 13, Georgia Southern 3. Sonny, let's take another look at that 50-yard field goal, a career best for David Merrick. I knew he was at his max. He gets all of this. A little bit of hook. And it splits the uprights. Yes, sir. Merrick, do it. That's an outstanding kick for the junior from Worthington, Ohio. The left footer from 50 yards out. That's a career best for Merrick. He's now four of six this season in the field goal department. And his previous two misses this year came from between the 40 and the 49-yard line. So he really found the range tonight. We've had some great kicking, of course, in the first half. Georgia Southern's Reed Haley had a 47-yard field goal. High, short kick. Taken at the 13-yard line. 
Casey Hill and Chris Gross. Terry Lester, right him out of bounds. For Georgia Southern, scoring drive for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Six plays, 31 yards. In just over three minutes, Merrick capped it with a 50-yard field goal. And the drive was really set up by the outstanding kickoff return by Chris Parker. So let's see if Georgia Southern can answer. They trail by 10 again at 13 to 3, 11.41 to go third quarter. Dupree to Williams. And Brian Stump, the middle linebacker for Marshall, comes up and makes the stop along with William King. Stump is into the lineup for the injured Shannon King. And What's going through the mind of Todd Donnan right about now, Sonny? <laughs> he wants some more points. <laughs> That's what quarterbacks think about. But he knows he's looking at just an awesome defense here this evening. And Both quarterbacks are. His counterpart on the Georgia Southern Eagles, Joe Dupree under center. Dive. Nowhere to go. Vince Parker, Ricky Carter there to make the stop. Not much running room inside, and it's third and five. Williams is the ball carrier, led by Ricky Carter. Just a dive to the, the fullback. A host of tacklers for Marshall. Chris Hamilton from Charleston, West Virginia, also in there, but Ricky Carter really stepped into the hole. Third down at five. Big, big third down at five we're looking at, or Georgia Southern's looking at. Dupree Throwback. wants to put it up. Pass is caught. Dawson has it. First down and more. Sprints one way, throws back the other. Out to the 47-yard line. A 17-yard pickup on third down for Georgia Southern. Next to Dawson, here's a throwback. Dupree looking back. A little underneath pattern. Delayed by Dexter Dawson. Dawson gets enough to move the chains. Excellent throw and catch. Dupree let loose the football right before he was hammered by Brian Stump. Checking at the line of scrimmage. Quick option to the far side. Here flag comes down. Wright. There right. Is, there is a flag down. Right written Dupree. down by William King from Charleston. Dupree running a speed option to the far side. Most likely will go against the offense. Where the flag came from. And right, limping off the field. A little movement up front. And as you predicted, Sonny, this one will go against the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Here's the call illegal formation. Offense. We play the down, five yard penalty. Not enough folks on the line of scrimmage. First and 15 now for Georgia Southern from their 42. Marshall leads by 10, under 10 minutes to go, third quarter. Both break. these teams undefeated coming into play tonight. Blitz, they break the ball. Dupree, nowhere to go. Sack time for William King. Number three introduces himself to Dupree. They cannot pick him up. No flags on the play. I thought I saw some movement in that Georgia Southern line, but apparently not. William King with the sack. Watch King and Stump. They pick up Stump. King slips a block and is all over the Georgia Southern quarterback, Dupree. King is a big, big play guy yeah, on defense for Marshall. The left guard, Miguel Ayub, for Georgia Southern, unable to pick up William King, and he gets the sack. Second and 22. Open. Fraley. Nice open field tackle made by Shannon Morrison from Oak Hill, West Virginia, at the 49-yard line. We're going to look at about third and nine. Got another injured player for Marshall. And that Shannon is Shannon Morrison. Morrison has to come off the field. Here's a sprint. Joe Dupree. Looks for Fraley. Fraley makes an excellent catch. Gets up field. Picks up. Excellent yardage, third and about eight. Third down for Georgia Southern. Blitz, here they come again. Dupree's got a lot of room around the outside. Cannot pick up the first down. Knocked out of bounds at the Marshall 48-yard line. 
As you indicated, Dave, looked like he had a lot of room. Until they close from the uh, Marshall secondary, Roger Johnson, the first one to get there. It's fourth down. And, and Tim Stowers is not sending in the punt team. Now, now he is. Now he is. <laughs> he had to think about it for a moment, though. The Marshall defense bows their neck. Bill Thatcher, Thatcher is the punter. with the punt. Tim Martin calls for the fair catch at the 18-yard line. So the Marshall defense holds Georgia Southern. The Thundering Herd has the football and a 10-point lead when we return. In the third quarter, Dave Weekly along with Sonny Randall and Mark Martin from a sold-out Marshall Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. Marshall 13, Georgia Southern 3. It's a big crowd tonight, 29,464, third largest crowd in stadium history in the fourth sellout. Draw. Since the new stadium opened here at Marshall. Chris Parker on the draw, not much running room. Brian Sellers, the nose guard, with a couple of teammates helping out. Down here, you want it to be high percentage. Marshall took the third quarter kickoff and moved into field goal range where David Merrick connected on a career best 50 yard field goal. Marshall 13, Georgia Southern 3. Second down and 11. Protection is good for Dunnan and the pass across the middle intended for the tight end Danny White is tipped at the line of scrimmage. And coming up to tip the football for Georgia Southern, Nick Davis. Davis almost picked that ball off. Had he picked it off, he would have walked in. They were trying to run a little delay, a little delay underneath. One player will clear, the other comes underneath. Ball was tipped, as you indicated. Nick Davis, a senior from Griffin, Georgia, really has a nose for the football. He's already got two fumble recoveries. This Georgia Southern defense coming into play tonight had forced 11 turnovers. Third and 11, Donnan. The pass is complete to Will Brown. Now it's ruled incomplete. One official called it a good catch. The other official came in and said it hit the ground. Sonny, I'm not sure Will Brown would have had the first down. Would have been just a little bit short. Coach Donna doesn't like the call. Across the way, I'm sure Coach Styles liked it. But the one official really couldn't see where the ball was. The other official came in, made an excellent call, because I do think it hit the ground. Georgia Southern has already blocked three punts this year. Travis Colquitt near the end zone. Gets it away. Line drive. Dawson takes it on the run with a Look head out. of steam. And returns it all the way down to the Marshall 25-yard line. And Georgia Southern has excellent field position. 7-13 to go third quarter. Georgia Southern trails by 10, but they've got great field position. Hey, Sonny, we had a couple of plays run off the clock right on second down and about six. Just took the pitch from Dupree. He was knocked out of bounds. It's third down and six for Georgia Southern at the Marshall 22-yard line. Big play for Georgia Southern. They trail by 10, 13 to three, six and a half minutes to go third quarter. Dupree, the pitch. Fraley wants to turn the corner, but Roger Johnson and William King stuff him at the 20-yard line. Roger Johnson from the secondary, William King from his linebacker position, makes the stop on Fraley. We're looking at a field goal. And They've got to come away with something. Reed Haley, who connected on a 47-yard field goal at the end of the first half, which was a record for opponents here at Marshall Stadium, comes into the game again. 37 this time. Botch snap. Falls loose. William King's all over Fraley. We talked about special teams. I don't have to tell you how big that one was. Bill Thatcher, the putter for Georgia Southern, the holder on field goal attempts, never had a chance. The ball Marshall. was snapped before they were even ready. Marshall dodges a bullet. The thundering herd has it back and a 10-point lead. 
what happened on this botched field goal attempt. The holder's not even looking at the ball. And it hits you right in the shoulder pads. He's looking back at the kicker. And then William King lassoes him. A little miscommunication there. And that cost Georgia Southern dearly. That's a big, big turnaround right there. The long snapper, Stuart Dixon, snapped the football, and the holder, Bill Thatcher, not looking for it. Marshall's got the football at midfield, first and ten. Pedro trying to get the corner. Great fill from the second there. Can't do it. A host of Georgia Southern defenders. Boy, when you string it out like this, there's nowhere to go. You can count the white jerseys. Pedro trying to bounce outside. A bunch of folks there. Penalty will go against Marshall. Holding. It's going to move the thundering herd back. Sonny Marshall's had an excellent opportunity here in the third quarter to really run some time off the clock, and they have been unable to do so. Holding, offense, 10 yards, replay the day. But when you talk about that bot snap, you're talking about a big, big swing there. It's 13-6 if they make the field goal. All they've got to do is score a touchdown. They go for two, they win the football game. You're still looking at 13-3. Georgia Southern really plagued by some turnovers in the first half and a real mental miscue on that bot field goal attempt to come back to haunt the Eagles. First and 20 from the 40-yard line. Three wide receivers for the herd. Screen. Pedro. He has blockers in front of him. Down at the 48-yard line. That's a gain of eight. Paul Carroll makes a stop from his linebacker position. What an exceptional football player, Paul Carroll, for Georgia Southern. Little screen here. Delay screen. You'll see 43, Paul Carroll. Along with Hitson. Two of Alton Hitson makes a stop. Carroll was the top tackler for the Eagles last year and leads Georgia Southern in tackles in 93. Second down and a dozen from the 48 yard line. Good protection for Todd Dunn and passes in and out of the hands of Tim Brown. Actually, it was pretty good coverage that time. Tim Martin came back for the ball. Ball bounced out of there. And we may have another holding penalty coming up against Marshall. Yes, sir. So this drive plagued by a pair of holding penalties. Right from ground level. Marshall quarterback Todd Donnan. Martin has to uncover here. He's covered, and he uncovers. Right in the shoulder pads. Holding on the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. We play the down. And the referee, Ron Buckner, with the call. You know, tomorrow morning, it looks like an incomplete pass, but I tell you what, boy, when you hit the receiver right in the numbers with it, you can't put that on the quarterback. Just a little bit of lack of concentration there. Martin, most, uh, most times, will hold on. Has excellent hands for Marshall. Second down and 25. Tim Martin, just a freshman from Saudi Daisy High in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Counter sweep. Parker tries to pop through there. Brought down shy of the 40 yard line for a gain of four. It'll be third down and 21. Dawson had to make the stop for Georgia Southern. Boy, the Eagles, they swarm to the football. Really do a good job on defense. You can count the hats. Most of the time, you'll see five or six on the pile. Third and Bunch. Long distance. <laughs> Looking down to the four minute mark of the third quarter. Three wide receivers for the Thundering Herd this time. Fakes it to Parker. Carson Paddock. Danny oh, White. His hands. Had the football and could not hold on. Danny White, the big tight end, runs across and Paddock takes his eye off of it just for a split second. Todd Dunn and put it right on the money. I'll tell you what, that's twice in this drive. Watch Todd Donovan. Right in the hands. Danny White would like to have another opportunity at that one. 
Can't ask the quarterback to do any more than that. Travis Colquitt into punt, and Dexter Dawson, who's been doubly dangerous to Georgia it. Southern, back to Almost receive got it. there. Georgia Southern had the, uh, the block team on, and Dawson has to make the fair catch at the 27-yard line. Jonathan Richardson almost got there to block it for Georgia Southern. There was a situation in last week's game in Statesboro Sunny where Georgia Southern blocked a punt, picked it up, and one of the one of the Eagles' own men stripped it away from a Georgia Southern player, and, and the Citadel re-recover re the football. So they are opportunistic, especially on the special teams. Now let's see what Georgia Southern has cooking. They trail by 10. We're getting late in the third quarter. Dupuis on a throwback. Trying to get it to Dexter Dawson. And Dupree. Awfully tough for him to throw all the way across the field. Yeah, that's the case. He seemed to short arm the ball again. Maybe that hand is bothering him. Dupree, he cannot get it across the field. Boy, you're asking him to throw the ball a long, long way. But I'm sure that Georgia Southern feels like they got to put it in the air. Second down now for Georgia Southern. Marshall led this game 10-3 at the half. They've got a 13-3 lead now. That's a face mask. I promise that's the face mask. Williams on the carry, and Brian Stump got a hold of the face mask. He was looking for something. Grabbed the wrong thing. Stump's been really impressive for Marshall in a substitute role for the injured Shannon King, but I think he finally made a mistake. We'll see whether it's 5 or 15. Uh, it was an unintentional face mask. Looked like it was unintentional. Williams pops it up in there. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. I'll tell you what, might have been unintentional, but they're walking off an intentional face mask. 15 big ones. Coach Donna doesn't like it. Not even a little bit. He would have gone for the five, but not 15. So Georgia Southern gets a first down out at the 47-yard line. Dupree, late pitch, Fraley. Tell you what, what a big play for the secondary. Twan Reynolds. Twan Reynolds, I mean, came in a hurry to make the stop on Dupree. Dive option. On the perimeter. Pitches back to Fraley. Reynolds makes a stop for Marshall from the secondary. A freshman from Roanoke, Virginia. That's a bit misleading. He spent a lot of time growing up in the Charleston area. Counter Williams right up the gut to the 46 yard line. That's a gain of nearly four. And we're going to look at third and four. Put you right, right in the middle. Sonny, it, it's so maddening when you're trying to defense that option attack. You really have to be aware of that handoff to the fullback right up the middle. And right when you get comfortable with that, that's when they go outside and hit you with a big play. That counter, that counter misdirection will drive you crazy. Blitz. And the left tackle moves. Now we're looking at third and about eight or nine. Stacy Moses right now the most embarrassed player on the field. You could tell Moses was coming off the football. Marshall came on a blitz. And I'll tell you what, when you see those linebackers move up in there, sometimes you get a little anxious on offense. Third down and eight for Georgia Southern. Pitch, Fraley into Marshall territory and out of bounds, but far short of the first down. And Georgia Southern will most likely be forced to punt the football again. Stump runs him out. Run that dive option. Nowhere to go. Stump's right there. They run out of room. Fraley has nowhere to go but out of bounds. Thatcher to punt. Tim Martin set to receive it. That was a big penalty, David.
Martin, no fair catch. Dangerous play. Wished he had Falk fair, was able to give that fair catch signal. Brought down just shy of the 20-yard line, and that's where Marshall's going to have the football first and 10. You know, Georgia Southern last week against the Citadel, their offense really sputtered in the second half of the game after they built a 16 to nothing lead on the Citadel Bulldogs. They were only able to manage 32 total yards in the second half. And tonight, they really haven't shown as much offensively here in the third quarter. Marshall's last possession plagued by penalties and two dropped passes. Parker. Slips a tackle to the 25-yard line. That's a gain of nearly six. He makes you miss, and he bounces off defenders. And I'll tell you what, if Nick Davis is hurt, Georgia Southern's going to be hurting. Actually, he was slowed down by Dawson before Nick Davis makes the stop. Very difficult to bring Chris Parker down when you shoot for the legs. He's got very strong legs. Got to wrap him up. Parker still getting nearly five yards a clip on the carry. Draw. Here he comes again. That's going to move the change, I believe. Awfully close to a first down. I believe he's got it. Close to that marker at the 30-yard line. We are now inside a minute to go in the third quarter. Watch this little delay draw here. Donnan, lead by Pedro, an excellent block by your fullback. Parker takes it up in there, and the chains move again for Marshall. First and ten for the Thundering Herd. Jim Donnan on the verge of taking this thing to the fourth quarter. And taking it there with a 10-point lead. From the eye, Parker again. And he gets nearly five. They run a lead. An excellent block that time by Chris Gross. Chris Gross from Beckley, the fullback in that formation, leading the way for Parker. So Chris Parker, the featured back thus far on this possession. And it's almost as longer the game goes, the stronger Parker gets. Marshall does not have to run off another play before the clock expires here in the third quarter. And they're going to let the clock run out. So Marshall is going to carry a 13-3 lead to the fourth quarter, a fourth quarter in which Marshall has outscored their opponents 34 to nothing so far this season. Three quarters in the books in Huntington, and a sellout crowd cheers their thundering herd. Marshall leads by 10, 13 to 3. It's likely some Tums and aspirin, too, with this kind of a football game. Not the hot dogs. <laughs> I'm glad you added that. Those tube steaks are just outstanding, <laughs> believe me. Second and five at the 35 yard line. And here comes Chris Parker again. He's got the first down across the 40 and down to the 42 yard line. Let's head down to the sidelines for another Pepsi sideline report with our Mark Martin. All right, thank you very much, David. As we head into this fourth quarter, Marshall yet to yield a touchdown in this 1993 season, and it's a defense that's beaten up. Of course, Shannon King is out now with a concussion. He will not return. His backup, Brian Stump, playing, but with a badly bruised left foot. Rodney Garrett also with a mild left knee sprain, but he is in there. And also, Donnie Hugh Stevenson, they thought that he had a broken pelvis bone, but uh, it was not, and they just got it taped up right now. So we'll keep our eyes on those guys, but the herd defense a bit banged up here, but they still lead. All right, thank you very much, Mark. And these conference games, they really knock heads. The two juggernauts of the Southern Conference, Marshall and Georgia Southern, going toe-to-toe -to -toe tonight. Marshall leads Georgia Southern 13-3, 14 minutes to go in the game. And that's the first time in this drive that began in the third quarter, Sonny, where Georgia Southern was able to get a handle on Chris Parker. And they had eight or, five, eight or nine folks with handles on him at the peak of time. Swarming defense by Georgia Southern. Has been all night long. Marshall led it 10-3 at the half. Marshall has a tendency to get better as the game goes along. They've scored 54 of their 85 total points coming into this game in the second half. Here comes Parker with a head of steam. Breaks one tackle across the 45 and up to the 48-yard line. That's a gain of five. An exceptional job being done by the Marshall offensive line. 
Little counter, pull the guards. Marcus squares those shoulders again, runs north and south for the football. Picks up excellent yardage. Third and about three. Third and three for the Thundering Herd at the 49-yard line. Georgia Southern can't get back into this game, obviously, if they can't get the football back. Marshall trying a little ground control of their own. Power set. Parker stacked up, nowhere to go. Georgia Southern trying to strip the football. Looks like they feel like they have stripped it. The officials will go floor dead. Marshall will be forced to punt it away. Michael Morris, the junior from Adell, Georgia, with the stop. Chris Parker for Marshall, slow to get up. After the pounding he's taken here tonight, you can understand why he's a little slow getting up. This is real good looking Georgia Southern coach Tim Stiers. He's not used to losing games. We mentioned in the first half that Georgia Southern has won eight consecutive games against Southern Conference opponents. Georgia they, Southern's coming after this one. They're going to try to block it. Low snap. No, they got the return on. High, short kick. Dawson calls for the fair catch and makes a diving catch at the 34-yard line. He is fearless, that Dexter Dawson. And I'll tell you what, he saved about 20 or 25 yards with that ball rolling yeah, towards the Marshall end zone. 12 10 to go fourth quarter Georgia Southern has the ball but they're looking at a 10 point deficit with a 10 point lead Georgia Southern's got the football at the 35 yard line and with the ball control offense that they possess Georgia Southern really needs to get something going now on this drive Sonny David they don't like to play catch up but they're going to be forced to do it there here this evening Travis Colquitt with just a 16 yard punt Dupree wants to put it up in and out of the hands of Darren Willis. And actually, Dupree put it right in there that time. Ball just went in and out of the hands of Willis. Ran a little stop pattern outside. Georgia Southern players will display a DL on their helmets in 93 in memory of Lamar Dean Lott, a freshman defensive back who was killed in a car crash on May 16th. Lott was a Georgia product from Tiffin County High School. Marshall obviously knows a lot about tragedy. The 1970 plane crash wiped out the entire team. And two years ago, lineman J.D. Kaufman from Ironson died of a bacterial infection during the season. Second down and 10. Dupree on the quarterback draw. Still on his feet. Donahue Stevenson and Rodney Garrett wrap him up. Coach Tyra says uh, his football team is dedicated this season to Dean Lott. And I tell you what, he says it's unbelievable what it's done for their attitude. Joe Dupree is going to keep it all away. That's nothing but a quarterback draw. King misses up front. Dupree bounces off people. Spins around. Rodney Garrett's there. Now, boy, I tell you what, this is a huge loss. Very Georgia big Southern. loss. Joe Dupree, the outstanding quarterback for Georgia Southern, and he needs help as that right leg does not look good. With Dupree out of the lineup, Georgia Southern will go to the backup quarterback. That's Charles Bostic. Bostic started last year for Georgia Southern. And is really the same type quarterback. Would rather run the football, has outstanding running ability, but not a great throw. We told you about the Marshall inju injuries. Mark Martin just gave us an injury update on the Thundering Herd. But if Joe Dupree is seriously hurt, that really, really hurts the Georgia Southern offensive attack. So is Bostic being placed into a meat grinder or what? Tell you what, he's got excellent speed and quickness for a quarterback. Third and two. He's got the first down. I've talked about his speed and quickness, and boy, when he turned it up the field, you saw a surge. He's cat quick. Charles Bostic picks up the first down for Georgia Southern. And the other thing he does, Dave, is he brings those fresh legs to the game. 11-24. Look how quick we're talking about. He's going north and south with it here. Enough to move the chains. Charles Bostic from Thomasville, Georgia. A couple of years ago, they thought he was going to be the answer. This is a very unusual position for Georgia Southern to be in. They're not behind very often, but they trail by 10. 11 minutes to go, fourth quarter. Checking. Counter. Fraley. 
Eric Clausen from Huntington with a fantastic stop for Marshall. Clausen stays at home. They try to run that little handback, that misdirection. Fraley looked like he was working up a good lather of speed, but Clausen shut Just the door. The handback. Fraley, Clausen comes from nowhere to make the stop. There's a good look at Eric Clausen. Second down and 10. Motion. Flags are down. Folks moved a little too soon up front, I believe. And this will be motion against Georgia Southern. That'll cost them five yards. When you see a new quarterback comes in the game, his snap count is different. They eh? hard for the offensive line to get used to it. That's a good point. And it is motion against Georgia Southern. Dead ball, ball start. Offensive team, five yards. It'll be second and 15. That cost Georgia Southern five yards. Back down to the sidelines. Another Pepsi sideline report with Mark Martin. Thank you, David. I'm joined by a gentleman who was once the head coach of the Thundering Herd back in the 70s, Mr. Frank Elwood, now the senior associate athletic director of Georgia Southern. A night game in Huntington brings back memories, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Not quite the same facility, though. This is really a gorgeous facility that uh, Marshall has. I was here last year for the uh, national championship game, and then again today, and I'm, I'm more impressed than ever. September 11th, 1976, you knock off uh, Miami of Ohio. Uh, a great victory for you, wasn't it? It was one of the great victories, I, I would guess, in Marshall history, and we were very proud of it. Uh, uh, I know Miami was shocked, and the rest of the world probably was, too. Frank Elwood, great seeing you. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you very much. Frank Elwood, once a head coach here at Marshall, now at Georgia Southern, back upstairs to Dave and Sonny. All right, thank you, Mark. A huge, huge third down. 6 of 14 on third down conversions tonight for Georgia Southern. Quarterback draw. Bostic. Enough for the first down and then some. Keeps the drive alive. Crossing the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. And maybe Charles Bostic has given this Eagle team a spark. Well, those fresh legs, as we talked about, that was quarterback draw the whole way. I talked about his speed and quickness. Sets his feet. No question what he was going to do with the football. And he does it north and south. Marshall 32. And they have to come from the Marshall secondary to make the stop. Frank Elwood, the former coach at Marshall. Sonny, you replaced Frank Elwood. Yes, I did. I'll tell you one thing. That was big, big shoes to fill. Frank Elwood was a heck of a fine football coach. It was Frank Elwood that got Marshall into the Southern Conference. First and 10 at the 32. Bostick to pass. And Donahue Stevenson had a clear shot at him and missed. A flag is down. Bostick on his way. Inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line, but this play's coming back. This will be an interesting call. Flag back at the 35-yard line. I'm thinking it's face mask. Ah. Watch Bostic when he starts to come out of that. Donahue Stevenson right there. Reaches up to grab a hold of the face mask. Still talking this one over. This will be of the five-yard variety. Here's the call. Holding. Holding. Ten yards spot of the foul. We play the down. I thought it was a face pass. Looked like it, uh, Donahue Stevenson did grab the face pass just for a split second. So instead of the face mask penalty, a markoff, a holding penalty against Georgia Southern moves the football all the way back to the Marshall 45-yard line where it's going to be first and 22. Three wide receivers for the Eagles. Clock running. Nine and a half minutes to go in the game. Quarterback draw. Bostic tries it again. And again, he finds some success down to the 36-yard line of the Thundering Herd. Bostic calling his old number. I'm sure Coach Tim Stiers is the one that's calling it. But that's his strong suit. Quarterback draw, three-step drop. He gets about 10 of it back. Roger Johnson had to make the stop with Cherico. Second and 14 for Georgia Southern at the Marshall 36. Remember, the herd defense has not given up a touchdown yet. Dive. 
You know, this is four down territory. Williams carries it down to the 34-yard line. We mentioned that Georgia Southern is not used to being behind in a game. When they play at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, when, since that stadium opened back in 84, the Eagles 63-5. and five. But when they leave home, it's a bit of a different story. Georgia Southern just one and two in road games last year and six and eight away from Statesboro the last three years. Third and a dozen from the 34-yard line. Interesting call with 8-10 left here in this football game. Bostic. All kinds of problems. Donahue Stevenson with the big sack all the way back at the 48-yard line. And that takes him out of field goal range. That's a 14-yard loss. In that situation, if you're the quarterback, you just got to get rid of the football. Bostic comes out of there, looking to throw. This is a coverage sack. Nowhere to go with the football. Donahue Stevenson comes up with a big, big stop. Marshall coaches thought that Stevenson had a broken pelvis. Instead, he breaks the hearts of Georgia Southern fans with a big sack. Thatcher punts it out of there. And Martin calls for the fair catch at the 13-yard line. The Marshall defense with a big, big stand. 7-18 to go. The Herd with the ball and a 10-point lead. Football for nearly five minutes, but came up empty. Marshall's got it back. A 10-point lead. 7-18 to go. You know they're going to sit on it. They would like to control the line of scrimmage and the clock. Here comes Parker. Parker down to the 18-yard line. Paul Carroll, the first to get there. Parker now, 98 yards on 21 carries. Runs the lead. Parker just bounces outside. Carroll is there. Roselli is there. Boy, oh boy, hard hitting, intense football game tonight. You think this is the kind of atmosphere the Southern Conference was hoping for when Georgia Southern joined this league? Parker over 100 yards now. And when he turned him up inside, as again, he squares those shoulders. What a surge. It's a partial first down. Although these teams are only meeting for the third time, you really get a sense this is a real Watch great toss, rivalry. Wait. He runs one way, north and south. And if you're a football coach, you love that. Danny Brent makes a stop from the secondary. Clock moving, six and a half minutes to go. Marshall's got a first down at their own 28. You control the line of scrimmage, you control the clock. Donnan and with the, the fake. Eludes the sack. Carries it up to the 34-yard line. That's a gain of six. And how he was able to get away. Michael Morris, I'll tell you what, had dead aim on. And, and all, all Tom Donovan did was duck underneath on it. Watch Michael Morris, the big defensive man here. Tom Donovan just ducks it. And the big man goes right over top of him. And Donovan's kind of glad he missed that train. <laughs> That's for sure. Five and a half minutes to go now. Both these teams have UTC in their future. Georgia Southern will host the Mocs next week. Marshall's idle next week. Then they'll travel to Chattanooga on September 25th. Toss sweep. Parker. Parker Again, carry. north and south with it. Cuts carry. back up inside. And this is really frustrating time on the Georgia Southern sidelines. They trail by 10. They need the ball back. And Marshall eating up the clock with that running game. Parker doubly effective here in the second half. Doesn't look like Parker's wearing down any. After a long, long night, another big third down, third and about two. The clock continues to tick. Huge play for the Georgia Southern defense. They need the football back. And I'm sure they're going to come with everybody here. Trying to give Marshall a bad play on offense. Donnan wants to put it up, loops it. The pass was intended for Leron Chapman from Huntington. His first action of the night incomplete, and the Thundering Herd's got to give up the football, kick it away. All right, Sonny, if you're Tim Stowers, are you coming after the punter got again this time? You've got to come after this one. But when I look at them line up, I see they've got the return on. 
You got two. Now they don't have the return on. I can promise you they're coming. They this are coming. This is Colquitt. Georgia Southern's got the air spin back. Almost got there. Dawson gets away from the football and it rolls out of bounds at the 23 yard line. That's a 45 yard punt with no return. Georgia Southern's got the football back with four and a half minutes to go. They trail by 10. Go sold out Marshall Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. Nearly 30,000 looking on the first Southern Conference meeting between these two teams. And I tell you what, Dave, nobody's left. No, they haven't. Look around the stadium. It's going to be a long time getting out of here tonight. <laughs> Charles Bostick. They're replacing Joe Dupree as we check our Budweiser scoreboard. Bostick's got all kinds of pressure. It's Eric Clausen with the sack. Bostick, no way to go with the football. Excellent contain. Clausen makes the stop. Hurry up offense for Georgia Southern. Wake Forest leading App State, third quarter by two touchdowns. UTC has rallied to take the lead from Gardner-Webb big time. Quarterback draw. William King and company make the stop at the line of scrimmage. Byron Turner really lowered the boom on Boston. Turner was the first one there. King was the second one. And Georgia Southern wants to spend the time out. Florida and Tennessee, an SEC shootout. The Gators get it done. They beat the balls by a touchdown. Penn State. At home, they struggle. On the road, they were dynamite. They rock Iowa in the Big Ten. We'll step aside momentarily. Georgia Southern facing a big third down play, trailing by 10. Thunder claps for Marshall fans tonight at Marshall Stadium, but the thundering herd faithful hooping it up. They lead Georgia Southern by 10, 13, three, less than four minutes to go. The Eagles face a key third and 13. Bostic in and out of the hands of Wright at the 30 yard line. Again, we see it so often, Wright wanting to run before he caught the football. Bostic threw the ball pretty well in there. Georgia Southern needs two scores. It's fourth down and 13 at the 20. They're thinking about going for it here. They don't want to give it back to Marshall. I don't know what's in the air tonight, Sonny. We've seen a lot of drop passes on both teams. Really have. Now they've decided to punt it away. Because if they don't punt it, Marshall stops and the game's over. Bill Thatcher set to kick again. Low line drive. Like to return these cat Martin from the 37. Takes it back to the 45 yard line. And the thundering herd could really run out the clock if they could put a couple of first downs together. 332 to go in the game. Georgia Southern has two timeouts. Marshall led the game 10-3 at halftime. The only score thus far in the second half, a 50-yard field goal by David Barrett. Tying a Marshall Stadium record. Not very pretty tonight for Todd Donnan, but he's getting it done. It's not pretty, but very, very effective. From the eye this time, lead Parker. And Georgia Southern has just not had the answer tonight for Chris Parker. Well, they've been back on their heels here of late. But I tell you what, after constant pounding, you'll land back on your heels. A lot of credit goes to that big offensive line. Quarterback reverses out. There's Parker again. North and south. Starting to wear down that Georgia Southern front. Chris Parker, 120 yards tonight. Yeah, I think he wants a blow. An injury update from Mark Martin down on the sidelines, Mark. Thank you, David. Just spent some time on the Georgia Southern sidelines, and Joe Dupree injured the top part of his foot. They don't think it's going to be serious, but he, of course, is done for this game. And also, the starting center for Georgia Southern, Robert Moore, a fractured bone in his hand. It has been a very physical football game, gentlemen, back upstairs. And when you lose your center and your quarterback, you lose the heart of your offense. 
And Marshall continues to grind it out on the ground. Two and a half minutes to go. Sonny, it's beginning to look like Marshall is going to move to 3-0, and and Georgia Southern will drop to 2-1. and How difficult will be it? How difficult will it be emotionally for Georgia Southern to take on an improved UTC team next week in Statesboro? At home, I promise you'll be ready to play. They've got to be. Is that power set by the Marshall offense? Second and five. Kind of a jumbo look. Botched play. Don and lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Quarterback came out of there. A little miscommunication with his running back. That jumbo set. Todd Don and uh, dropping his head as dad looks on. Watch Don and come out of there as he reverses out. Not sure where to go with it. Did the smartest thing, just hang on to it himself. Georgia Southern has called a timeout. The Eagles with one left. And Todd Donnan, the starting quarterback, he's hurting. You just heard from Mark Martin that Joe Dupree, the starting quarterback for Georgia Southern, knocked out of the game with a foot injury. He won't return. And Todd Donnan biting the bullet down on the Marshall sidelines. He obviously wants to stay in there. And with, a, with two minutes to go in the game, realistically, if Marshall can pick up one more first down, they might be able to run out the clock. I think that's what they've got in mind. Tim Stowers, the head man at Georgia Southern. I'll tell you one thing, their folks have come in here and played their hearts out. This has been a whale of a football game. A real, real fine football game. Southern Conference football tonight. Georgia Southern and Marshall, of course, Georgia Southern, the model 1AA program of the 80s. Marshall seemingly set to take over that role in the 90s with two straight berths, berths in a title game, a national championship to their credit. And don't forget that the folks here in Huntington have been able to wrestle that 1AA national championship game away from Statesboro and put it right here in Marshall Stadium. Third down and five, ball at the 40-yard line. Parker, nowhere to go. Maybe a gain of one. Scott Davis made the stop for Georgia Southern at the line of scrimmage. And Georgia Southern has burned their final timeout. Fourth down, four yards to go. You would believe that Marshall would punt it away, and you would think Georgia Southern would come after it again. So Travis Colquitt is into the game to punt the football again. top of the show we talked about great defense well that's exactly what we've watched all night long a real hard-hitting game and Colquitt really earning his scholarship tonight last year during the regular season he only punted the football 20 times well we knew with that great defensive struggle we were looking at here this evening that both punters would get a real workout he's getting ready for his eighth punt of the night Danny White, the tight end for the Marshall Thundering Herd over there on the sidelines. He's happy about the, the big W that Marshall thinks they may be putting in the column in a moment, but he's also got to be concerned about the passes he dropped tonight. Well, Georgia Southern will pin their ears back and come after this one. Total offense tonight, Marshall 275 yards, Georgia Southern 222 yards. Defensive game. If you're Marshall, you just watch your punter to get rid of the ball. Colquitt going, close. For, going for the corner. Oh, what a great kick on the half yard line. Out at the half yard line. A 38 yard punt that goes out at the half yard line, and they are mobbing Travis Colquitt. He's one of the best in the nation, and certainly he's put on a show here this evening. Simply, you can't do it any better. Travis Colquitt. Looks like a little pooch. That pooch goes a pretty good distance. And out at the half-yard line. What a kick. You couldn't take it down there and lay it any closer to the goal line. Punting the football in his blood. His uncle punted at Tennessee and in the NFL with the Steelers and the Vikings. 
Bostic trying to get to the outside. And he finds some room. Roger Johnson with a big open field tackle. If he doesn't make that stop, he's Bostic going a long way. A long, long way. That's an 18 yard gainer all the way out to the 19 yard line. But we're looking at 130. You've got to put it in the air. You want to set the chains. Bostic's been impressive in a relief role tonight. Forced into action because of the foot injury to starting quarterback Joe Dupree of the Eagles. Charles Bostic was the starting quarterback in 1992 for Georgia Southern. Looking good out there, but a long way to go if he wants to bring Georgia Southern back. Bostic, pump fake, lets it fly, sails out of bounds. And boy, he is level. And guess who hit him? Brad Stumps. Stumps had quite a night. He really has. He's come off the bench. Watch Bostic here. Gets away from Vince Parker. Oh, but not against Stump. That's a heck of a stop there. Clock stopped. A minute 21, second and 10. Georgia Southern at their 19 yard line. They trail by 10, 13 to 3. Quarterback draw. Bostic trying to find some room. That's your biggest weapon. Gain of about eight. Third down and two. No huddle this time for Georgia Southern. Clock is running. Hurry up offense. They may want it to hurry. Georgia Southern. Big need, time. They need two scores. Bostic to put it up. Guns it. Complete out of bounds. Got the pass to right. And stopped the clock at the 32-yard line. Wright does an excellent job of getting his feet down in bounds. Chris Wright on the reception. Here's Bostic. Sprints to the near side. Plants his feet. Gets right. Wright gets both of them down. You only need one in college. They stop the clock. 52 seconds to go. Marshall in a prevent defense. They're going to give it to you underneath and in front of them, but nothing deep. Bostic with the pump uh -oh. fake. I Going long. He's got a man. That's Willis. And I'll tell you what, Willis made an excellent outside move. And I'll tell you, Juan Reynolds took the bite. Reynolds took the bite on the out pattern. I just said, nothing deep. Watch Bostic here pump. Wright runs it out. Reynolds takes the bite. And it's a big, big play for Georgia Southern. That's a 45-yard gainer. First and 10 for Georgia Southern. Fisher wants timeout to get the chains moved. Having some trouble with the chains over there on the sidelines. I'm not sure what the folks are. I guess the folks are booing the chain, chain gang. Coach Donnan, he wants to know what the deal is here. Coach Stiles across the way. It appears the chains got tangled up over there on the Georgia Southern sidelines with the communication wires. And you have to set the chains before they can wind the clock. So that's an un unintentional break for Georgia Southern. Now the clock is running. And the chains are set. Bostic. Dive. Hands nothing. off to Williams inside. Nothing doing. Georgia Southern has no timeouts. You're trying to hit that dive up inside. Pop a big one. Marshall's defense will have none of it. They've got to throw this one. Bostic stops the clock with 14 seconds to go. And you got to go in the end zone with the next one. Our Ashland Oil Bank One player of the game. Chris Parker, the running back for the Marshall Thundering Herd, the sophomore from Lynchburg, Virginia. A $100 donation to the Morrow Library on the campus of Marshall University. Heading there in the name of Chris Parker, our Ashland Oil Bank One player of the game. Third and that, and you got to go in the end zone. 
Boston. And he's going in the end zone. And there's a call. There's going to be a holding call at about the three-yard line. Reynolds just had to hang on. Down to eight seconds to go. Willis was open. They're going to mark it at the five. A holding call at the five-yard line. And you know, Sonny, it looked that time as if Tuan Reynolds was biting again on the pump fake by Charles Bostic. He was looking right at the quarterback, and I'll tell you what, if you look at the quarterback, and you'll take the pump fake every time. Then he had nothing to do but just saddle him up. He didn't want Willis to catch an easy touchdown. Eight ticks left on the clock. It would be extremely difficult now for Georgia Southern, in theory, to come back and win this game. Well, you'd have to score a touchdown, then there's cover an onside kick. That'd be the only way you'd have a chance with no timeouts. Right. Interference, defense, that'll be 15, automatic first down. At the five. This is the deepest penetration of the night for Georgia Southern. Marshall's defense has not given up a touchdown all season long. Eight seconds to go. It's first and goal. Blitz. Bostic, back to blitz. pass. Let's it go for the end zone. Incomplete. Two ticks left. Marshall tried to bring some heat. So unless there's a penalty on the Marshall defense, this will be the last play of the game. This will be a great, great win for the Marshall crowd. And boy, I'll tell you what, an awful bitter pill to swallow for the folks from Georgia Southern. The national champions, the Marshall Thundering Herd, trying to defend their crown. They will start the season 3-0. Bostic. Option. Late pitch. No, he did didn't not get score. in there. Didn't get in. Did not get in. And that's the final play of the game. The Marshall Thundering Herd with a 13-3 win over the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Back with more from Marshall Stadium in just a moment. Battle 13 to 3, only one touchdown in the game. A touchdown pass in the second quarter. Todd Donnan to Will Brown for Marshall. Chris Parker, 25 carries, 121 yards. The Thundering Herd moves to 3 and 0. Georgia Southern drops to 2 and 1. Our final score: Marshall 13, Georgia Southern 3. For Sonny Randall and Mark Martin, this is Dave Weekly saying so long from Marshall Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia.